My name is Shilpa Jori. I'm a pulmonologist and a pH specialist with Pulmonary Associates in Richmond, in Richmond, Virginia. I am here to help you understand who group three pulmonary hypertension. With this video, I'm hoping you will become familiar with the different groups of pulmonary hypertension and especially group three pulmonary hypertension that develops in people with severe underlying lung disease or chronic hypoxia, which is a term for low oxygen levels. Pulmonary hypertension is high pressure in the lung circulation. The diagnosis may be suggested by high pressures noted on the right side of the heart on an echocardiogram, but confirmation of the diagnosis requires a procedure called right heart catheterization. The normal pressure in the arteries measured in your arm is 120 by 80 millimeters of mercury. Definition of pH is based on a calculation of mean pulmonary artery pressure with values obtained during right heart catheterization, and pH is said to be present if the value of mean pulmonary artery pressure is more than 20 millimeters of mercury, with normal being between 8 and 15. There are several different conditions that lead to pulmonary hypertension. In order to put together conditions that cause pH by similar mechanisms, the World Health Organization has classified pH into five broad groups. PAH, or pulmonary arterial hypertension, belongs to WHO group one and is rare. Majority of the patients with pulmonary hypertension will have underlying left heart disease and fall into WHO group two. Around 10% of the patients with pH fall into WHO group three and have underlying lung disease, sleep apnea, or low oxygen levels. In order to understand blood flow through the heart and the lungs, it is important to know the circulation route the blood takes. The right side of the heart receives blood lacking oxygen from the body, and the right ventricle pumps it into the lungs through the pulmonary artery. In the lungs, the blood absorbs oxygen and releases carbon dioxide, which is exhaled. The oxygen-rich blood is then returned to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary veins and pumped to the rest of the body by the left ventricle. In conditions where the lung is damaged or severely abnormal, the small blood vessels in the lungs, called arterioles, can be narrowed or compressed. When the blood oxygen level falls, the arterioles also go into a spasm and narrow, as a result of which there's more resistance to blood flowing through and the pressure rises. Consider this similar to a water pump trying to get water to flow through an obstructed pipe. When the flow decreases through the narrowing, more pressure is needed to push it through and the pump has to work harder. When the right side of the heart has to work hard constantly trying to keep the circulation going through narrowed arterioles in the lungs, it is under constant strain and ultimately fails, resulting in what you know as right heart failure. There are several lung diseases that cause this category of pH. The most familiar would be interstitial lung disease or ILD from any underlying cause, idiopathic usual interstitial pneumonia in which the fibrosis or scarring occurs and the cause is not known, obstructive lung diseases like COPD or emphysema or sleep apnea, especially when these conditions are associated with low oxygen levels. Generally, it has been noted that the more severe the lung disease is, there is more likelihood of having pH and pH tends to be more severe. It has been postulated that pH starts because of damage to the lung and low oxygen levels or hypoxia, which as mentioned before, causes the arterioles in the lungs to narrow. This can improve when patients are provided oxygen therapy in some conditions. Over a long period of time, if hypoxia persists, the blood vessels become remodeled or thickened and stay narrowed permanently. pH can develop in people living on high altitude without lung disease because of low oxygen concentration in the air at elevation. 
So how do we know when patients with lung disease develop pH? Treating physicians should maintain a high level of suspicion to suspect pH in patients with lung disease who do not improve with treatment. If you have COPD that is mild or moderate in stage, or have pulmonary fibrosis that does not appear severe by CT scan, or have sleep apnea and are using CPAP but are still symptomatic with shortness of breath with exertion, there must be something else going on. The severity of your lung disease can be assessed with some functional tests, like lung function test that measures your lung capacity and volumes, Another test used to assess severity of lung involvement is a CT scan that gives us a picture of your lungs providing an anatomical assessment. If you have severe pH with only mild abnormalities on PFTs and on CT scan, it is important to do further workup to see if you have pH, which although rare, can still occur in patients with other diseases. When pH is suspected, the most common first test is an echocardiogram, which is obtaining pictures by doing an ultrasound imaging of the heart. Apart from giving an idea about the pressures on the right side of the heart, echo also gives us valuable information, such as the size of the heart chambers, their function, structure of the valves, presence of fluid around the heart, and most importantly, the size and function of the right ventricle. We always worry when we find an enlargement and reduced function of the right ventricle as it suggests pH may be severe. The confirmation of any kind of pulmonary hypertension requires a right heart catheterization. This is a minimally invasive test, but done in a cardiac catheterization lab. A long catheter is inserted through one of the big veins in the neck or the groin until it reaches the pulmonary artery and information about the pressure and function of the heart is measured. Based on the information from the right heart cath and combining the information from your lung testing and symptoms, your pH specialist will be able to discuss treatment options with you. Remember, however, that pH in lung disease does tend to improve when underlying lung problem is treated. Oxygen therapy, if your oxygen levels are consistently low, is proven to help with increasing survival and decreasing hospitalization if you have severe COPD. Based on the nature of your lung disease, whether you have COPD or ILD or sleep apnea, you will be recommended bronchodilator inhalers, antifibrotic agents to slow the progression of scarring in your lungs, CPAP or BiPAP, and oxygen. If you smoke, you must quit smoking. Keeping up with nutrition and maintaining muscle strength with exercise and pulmonary rehabilitation will help keep you stronger and active. If you have advanced disease, discuss possible surgical treatments for COPD or lung transplant with your pulmonologist. You can find out about clinical trials that are still enrolling patients with WHO group 3 pH. Your pH specialist may need to individualize your care in collaboration with your primary physician, cardiologist, and pulmonologist. Becoming an informed patient may facilitate these discussions so that the best possible care becomes available to you. You're not alone with this disease, and treatment options continue to advance. Finding a local support group and becoming involved can be very helpful, and PHA can help.